changes around us every day. So how do you manage the changes that happen in mining year round? Welcome to another episode of Change Itself, hosted by Gus Miner and Eric Demers. The show is brought to you by Sophie and Technica Mining and is produced by Crownsman Partners. Now, here are your hosts, Gus and Eric. All right, welcome everybody. Episode eight, I'm gonna change it up today. I'll start things off. Uh, remember, click like, subscribe, thumbs up, whatever, comments. Looking forward to hearing about them. Gus, what's going on? Oh, it's been uh, it's been a heck of a month. It's, yeah, yeah, it's been a fun December. <laughs> Getting ready for Christmas, the holidays. Getting ready for the holidays. Uh, kick COVID to the curb over the past few weeks, so that's been fun. And uh, yeah, really excited about our last episode of the year. Right on. Are we doing a year in review? What are we up to? No, I think this uh, today we're going to talk a lot about uh, safety tech. You know, we've had a lot of great conversation with uh, a lot of great leaders over the past uh, several months, and uh, we've encountered and seen a lot of great things for 2021. And uh, our guest today, uh, Larry from Komodo Tech, will be able to shed some light on uh, what he's experienced over this year, um, as well as uh, what we can, you know, uh, focus on for 2022 and what are the groundbreaking things that we can introduce uh, in the workplace in 2022 to really change the game. Right on. Excited to hear about that. And I got to I got to say, I think one of the things that kicked the year off for me was listening to uh, Larry and a coworker talking about HRV. So, uh, you know, really educated me. So I'm looking forward to this conversation. All right, right on. So on that note, we'll bring him in. Uh, Larry. Yes. Welcome aboard. Hello, guys. Hello, everybody who's watching. Uh, yes, the, I would rephrase Gus and say it was a heck of a year because I wasn't a part of the previous uh, episode. So it was a heck of a year for, I think, everybody based on that pandemic stuff and the reevaluating how the office operates, uh, how to improve, how to make management of remote staff more efficient. And actually, that's the good part. It's really good part because, because the I think the environment is changing. The environment is changing. And uh, speaking of HRV, we actually did a little experiment. Uh, we we tracked HRV of our uh, employees while they were working in office at location, right? And uh, we we did the same when they work in uh, remotely. And it's actually it's actually pretty interesting numbers there. In, in most cases, the HRV is increased while they're working at home. Probably the environment and uh, internal clock, you know, because they can have food whenever they they want to. They're not tied to to the office, whatever 12, 12, 30, 12, 1 or eleven thirty. 12, you know, particular, they, they just, they just do. And, and actually HRV is getting better. So basically, don't want to, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, Larry, just for the listeners, like I know what HRV is after watching that uh, video you had, but what is HRV and is high good or bad? Uh, high is good. Uh, low is bad. That's pretty simple. Now it's uh, the HRV. It's actually it's major indicator of how how our body operates in short terms. You know, it's uh, in details. Uh, it's 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 how our heart reacts on on environment, including food, including everything. So how our heart reacts, because uh, not actually heart, brain probably, because brain. Uh, command to to the heart on a heartbeat how many heartbeats it should do to supply all oxygen and minerals and all to our body so it's actually yeah that's that's basically what it is now higher hrv is better lower hrv is is not good it's not good and what does so hrv stand for larry hrv stands for heart rate variability the actual term speaks for itself it means between, uh, we have a heartbeat, right? Let's say 60 per minute, every second. But there is a difference in time between the heartbeats that measures not in seconds, in milliseconds. So higher that interval between the heartbeats in milliseconds, that's higher HRV, which is better. So the, the brain says, when you, okay, when you 
when you in recovery mode, let's say you did some physical activity, right? Or actually food intake as well. Uh, your, your body inside starts to work. And in case of uh, the first one, it starts recovery. So there is too many signals to brain from all different um, parts of our body requiring recover, recovery, okay? Like oxygen is number one. And when the brain sees too many requests for recovery, it makes heartbeat uh, like stable with almost no, no, no variability in the heartbeat in the time between the heartbeat. So that's a low HRV. So recovery mode, it's low HRV. When it starts to get back to normal, let's say some muscle, okay, says, okay, I had enough oxygen, I'm recovered, I'm fine. Uh, the less signals goes to the brain, brain analyzes the data and, and tells to heart, it saves heart actually, it tells, to, it tells to heart, okay, you know what, you can it just, just don't, don't work too much right now. That guy doesn't need it, this one too, so just make it easy. And that's when the recoveries actually start to, like people, the human being starts to recover, the HRV goes up. Same with the food. Food intake uh, intensifies the, uh, the body inside, you know, the process. It, 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 sta it starts to deliver all minerals. It's, it's digestion. It's like lots of, lots of stuff involved. And, and the HRV drops. When, when it's come to the it comes to the, like digestion and all that stuff comes to the end hrv goes up and it's actually depending on what kind of even food you take if you took some food is not good for you I, I, i'm not gonna name food that that bad for you because uh hamburger for me might be awesome for you not that that much you know so we, we have like every human being have a different reaction on anything so that's basically what we're trying to we're all different absolutely all different so that's why we actually exist you know can you imagine we're all the same it's not it's not not kind of not exciting <laughs> right so i guess the hrv is almost like the hemi engines and how it goes from four cylinders to eight cylinders when it requires the power or not right yeah absolutely yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. something like that hrv you know what for simplicity you can you can you can you can say the hrv is like check engine light so when you when you see the check engine in your car what it means something is wrong now by by doing by measuring and seeing the number hrv number we cannot tell you what what, what is wrong why your hrv is low we, we can't it's it, it's impossible it just gives you but something is wrong so the rest is in the hands of your doctor so we're not we're not we're not diagnosing you. We're just telling you so something is is not right. So you have right. to check yourself or something like that. Yeah. Right. So, awesome. Larry, then uh, I guess what Komodo Tech brings, we I don't think we've touched on it, but you guys have a sensor basically that allows us to wear a device that will basically give us a check engine light. Is that kind of uh, in really simple terms? And really simple terms, yes. And one little different that different differentiates us. Uh, sorry, it differentiates us from any other HRV measurement. That uh, our HRV based on electrocardiogram. And most most of the HRVs on the market now, the devices that that gives you the HRV number based on optical sensor. And as far as we're speaking here in milliseconds difference between heartbeats, we need to have that precision uh, to, 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 to be able to get out that timing. And HRV, let's say it's uh, 400 samples per second, 400 samples per second. And optical sensor gives you maximum, I think, 80 samples per second. Okay. It's maximum, it's, it's most advanced optical devices. So yeah. consider the difference. So what, 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 what samples per second will give you better results based on millisecond measure, milliseconds measurement. So that's obvious. So ECG is the way to go. ECG is the way to go for HRV. It's the only way to go. No, no, BP, no uh, optical, no that blinking lights on the, on the back of your, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's not there. It's, it's not going to give you that, that precision. 
Right on. So, so being that uh, Komodo Tech is in the hardware business and uh, creating some waves with uh, some new tech that's coming up, uh, what's crossed your radar in 2021 that really uh, had you raise an eyebrow or really piqued your curiosity? In 2021, yes. We, uh, basically, that stuff what I mentioned at the beginning. So the, the checking out how the office and home environment uh, uh, affects uh, or affects people, affects people, you know, what's the difference? Uh, where we can get better productivity because the major part in any company is productivity. Where we can get a better productivity while they're on remote or, or, or in the office. And it's controversial based on, you know, based on deliveries, maybe in, in, in 50% of the cases, based on deliveries, let's say uh, coders, programmers, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe the office environment is better uh, because uh, there is some pressure exists when you in, in, in the office and you kind of relaxed, more relaxed at home. Uh, but for HRV, for the same reason, actually, you're more relaxed, your HRV is better. For, 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 <laughs> for, the, for, the, for the health, of of the employees work is people uh, of course the um, of course the home environment is better of course it's it's no, no doubt but you have to find the golden middle so maybe uh, maybe maybe split a week okay three days two days three days in the office two days at home or vice versa two days in the office three days at home something like that so we, we actually buy that stuff. We kill uh, we kill a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, birds in one stone. Actually, right. First of, yeah. First of all, we, we take care of environment. People doesn't drive. Some some of my guys driving like hour and a half to get to the office. Can you imagine how much gas and CO two they uh, their vehicle produce and all that stuff? That stuff uh, less spending. We can share the, the the desk inside, so less spending on rental. Uh, people happy more like happier than five five days a week in the office, you know. So just trying to make that 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 golden middle that will satisfy. First of all, of course, me as a as a as a company uh, uh, owner, right. To, for delivery to people we pay money it, it doesn't matter where they are working so we have to get uh, results for, for what we pay and the results should be should satisfy us as well so that's kind of so that that's the that, that's the basically year okay so oh it's it's speaking of of our production and all that stuff now uh I don't know what the next year will bring us, guys. I, I really don't want. It's hard. It's hard to, it's hard to predict anything because some stuff coming up that you, you don't even have an explanation for for, for where where it came from. Right. Sh shortage of uh, truck drivers in the market of the United States. Where it came from? Why why the people doesn't want to drive anymore? Uh, I don't think as a, I don't think as a, they, they basically sell self employers, I think, and I don't think the government helps them with a, with money too much. So it's not the reason. So why, why people doesn't want to work, how, how they live, where they get the, the income. I, I, I don't know. I don't know the explanation. So that's kind of, not, that's speaking of 22, I, I, I really, it's really. No, nobody can even tell now. If Omicron came, yes, it's it's more infectious, right? But it's less dangerous to the people. Uh, and every two months, we will see a new new virus. So uh, uh, hard to say. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's been interesting because I mean, I've been doing I do quite a bit of research on new technologies and new things that I can leverage and new things that I can uh, entertain for the future. And you know. <clears throat> I think that uh, between 2020 and 2021, there's been a lot of great breakthroughs um, as far as like, you know, like exoskeletons, uh, you know, a lot more advancement in drone technology. 
Um, a lot more advancement in video technology, right? As far as understanding what's happening from an AI perspective, what's happening with the human being at work or the equipment at work so that we can do anal the analysis there. Yep. Uh, but to your point, the interesting part is that all these technologies have started. Um, like, I, I don't know if we can predict that there's any, there's going to be any new breakthrough technologies break, you know, coming out in 2022. Uh, but my hopes is that we can, you know, crest over this problem with the shortage of workforce <laughs> and, and deliver those ideas, right? It seems like right now we're in, in we're, we're in a very interesting time in the, in technology production where, um, a lot of great ideas have come to light over the past few years. Um, and now it's the, like the R and D stages are probably getting close to complete. And now it's going to be, you know, uh, applying those new technologies directly in the workplace, directly in uh, society. Um, so, I mean, from what I see uh, so far, it, there's going to be a lot of trial and error in 2022 with Real trying good. out a lot of these new technologies. And at the same time, it's going to be fun to see how the procurement process is going to be on these technologies with all these shortage of uh, chipsets and uh, and shortage of uh, of hardware and equipment and the labor to put it together. So it uh, I echo that statement, Larry, that it's 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 going to be difficult to predict what uh, what we can expect in 2022, other than hopefully being able to supply the demand. <laughs> I think Absolutely. the really interesting part will be like we're trying to predict what like impacts it might have is like how's that actually going to impact the use of technology what's out there what's what's starting to take shape like can we put some of these solutions to resolve some of these these problems and issues we're seeing like that's what i'm really excited for we were talking uh, yesterday gus around or it was monday about ai and like okay we have this grandiose idea of what that looks like in the future in our minds but the baby steps to get there. Is there some of that stuff that's going to start to work to, to, to get us there? Like what are the small steps we're taking today and throughout this year that we're going to like, we're taking because we're having issues with supply chain management, whether it's chips or, you know, wood windows, like consumables, like whatever it is, how, how are we leveraging this technology to help us improve and to, you know, work at things like climate change and, other social issues that are out there. Absolutely. Speaking of, uh, Gus said shortage of staff and uh, etc. Maybe, maybe in some in some point it's good, so we can utilize less less staff more efficiently. Yeah. Right? More productive. It's, uh, it, taking into consideration our technology, you can actually now including AI. Let's say you have a data on, on 10 employees that working for you, okay? And they all uh, doing the HRV, et cetera, that uh, biometric, okay? And uh, artificial intelligence analyzes the data. So you can actually manage those 10 people at the peak of efficiency. They, they, they can make it productive with, with that data an, an analyzing by AI. Is the same the same productive as let's say twenty people, well, just for example. I'm not uh, right. don't catch me for for numbers, but okay, fifteen, of easy, easy. You just you just can see the the AI spits you the number at the beginning of each day or something like that, and you you just pick the people who who's more capable of doing something at this particular point, and there you go. There, it's like it's like a little example we have uh, we have our uh, trial in in special operation forces right uh, the, the point is using it there let's say platoon 10, 10, 10 guys okay just for example and there is a special operation coming the next day and the commander sees the, the numbers so the the statistics says like that special operation will kill one. It's, it's just statistically, right? So one will not gonna come back out of 10, but you can send nine actually to that operation. It's not, 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 that ne ne don't, not necessarily all 10. Now, who you pick to stay? If you have HRV numbers, okay, so let's say morning readiness and that guy is 
is, is has a very low HRV. What's the point to send him? Okay, leave him. Maybe you're saving the life. Every worker deserves to go home safely at the end of the day. Book a demo with Sophie to discover how their groundbreaking EHS management software empowers workers to proactively avoid hazards and how organizations like yours can cultivate a stronger work culture. You can learn more at sophie.com. Technica Mining is a premier underground mining and construction contractor. They stand for delivering quality project work on time and on budget through innovative thinking. Their excellent safety record, experienced workforce, and large equipment fleet will guarantee the timely completion of all your project needs. Trusted by the world's leading mining companies, Technica Mining has over 20 years of experience in mine construction, development, and production. Contact Techn Technica Mining to take your next mining project to the next level. Learn more at technicamining.com. Change Itself is produced by Crownsman, the voice of industry. Check out more, including The Crownsman Show, Mining Now, Crownsman Energy, and Crownsman Egg at crownsman.com. Go ahead. Sorry, Larry, we're seeing like the convergence of this in the workplace now through some really interesting stuff. And one of the things maybe to touch on technology from this year and where we're going into next year and some convergence, um, I was contacted by uh, someone from the University of Ottawa that I've been working closely with uh, and talking about um, heat stress and heat management, then they're conducting a survey to get an understanding of where like people are in the mining industry across Canada, and I actually think North America, as far as the attitudes and beliefs behind heat management, because ultimately we've been managing it from a, some old, I don't even know where it comes from, uh, way of doing it with like heat rest regime. And to your point earlier, if everybody's different, well, is that right for everybody? And if we start talking about your, like, is that the right person to send to work today? Are they fit? Do they have that right number? Right? So I see this convergence where we're going to start to like shift some of the, the knowledge and we're going to start focusing on, you know, the individ individuality of the person and being fit for work and caring for people to getting better health and the, the, the effects that that's going to have on, you know, the person themselves, their personal life, the, like, the environmental, like the whole, the whole thing. And that's where like some of the stuff you're talking about HRV and wearable technology starts to come into play. And for us, I think in the mining industry over the next year, maybe even Technica in particular, um, that's kind of where I see us near the, near the end of, if I'm at the end of 2022, looking back as we're started that journey and we're like, you know, making better decisions based off person's optimal health. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's it's it comes to the simple uh, words like work smarter not harder right so the maybe the sh staff shortage and using it at m more efficiently doesn't doesn't mean to in intensify their work doesn't mean to to make them work harder it's actually vice versa maybe that day you can deliver 150% and not even notice that because your internal your your internal uh, state is perfect that day, and you not I mean you you deliver one hundred and fifty percent that day, okay, and you 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 going home, and you don't feel actually uh, tired. I mean, in, in in basic terms, right? Yeah. So you, utilizing because the human being is very complicated machine. It's most complicated. Now our brain works probably four percent at best right of, of its capacity so why we, we can probably based on that scientific way approach to to manage the workforce you know uh will will you will get a better result and it's going to be better even for 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 people even for people i would say somebody can tell oh you know what you're trying to kill us this overworking and stuff no no it's actually vice versa vice versa and especially if you take into consideration the truck drivers just just well we're starting my, to, we're starting those conversations now in the yeah. like here in the office yesterday we we're having uh, like trying to figure out like do we have you know, data we're already collecting that might be an indicator of things that might affect a person's well-being and HRV and like the stresses under which people are or feel that they are and what the impacts of that is on, you know, safety performance and the overall performance to your point, Larry, on production and productivity, like there's, it's one in the same. And so 
how do we influence that? And it's probably actually on the health and well-being and the care side of things more than it is in some of the prevention activities that, not to say that they're not important, they're definitely important. However, there's this whole untapped side of things that we haven't gone to yet. And it's called taking care of yourself and being fit and optimal for, for work. And that'll really, I think that's the next maybe logical step for us and with the workforce, myself included, and how to get more and better out of myself. Guys, can, can you answer me one question? Sure. Uh, you are a specialist in, my, in minds and all that stuff, more experts, okay? L let's say, tell me one thing. Why the mind is equipped with thousands of sensors uh, taking the CO2 level, the methane level, the temperature, like oxygen level, everything. Now, do you have one sensor on, on the person who works in that environment? A one, name me one. That's it. That's the point. We can take, we can take care of the environment perfectly. The, the technology is there. We can put sensors and, and whatever, like on, on every meter cameras and stuff. But what do we do for the, for the person itself? How do we know how it feels? How that high oxygen or whatever, low oxygen, and how it affects, you know, medically, right? But yeah. not in, in every point of time. Because environment down there changes hourly, probably. But I think we miss the variability, like you talked about earlier around, like the individuality. I think we try to like, we have this idea that either everybody's like yourself or everybody fits like a certain like parameter. Everybody's like that same, like, you know, the, the mannequin, everybody's the same. Right, right. But right. in reality, we're not. And we're all affected differently by different, you know, variables, impacts, like how we interpret things. All these things are at play and we're trying to like, you know, trying to help guide people and make better decisions, and better performance. And we don't actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's the same. Those individual you know, things are, are doing. Yeah. And who's better was... to monitor that than yourself? Like if when I wear my, my wristwatch with the monitor it might not be accurate now that I'm, you know, after this discussion, but it's helping me see where I can make better choices and how, like what's actually Absolutely. affecting me. Cause whatever's affecting me might not affect us, might not affect yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now. Uh, yeah. I wanted to say something. Don't, don't Sorry. Worry. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's okay. So yeah, basically that's, 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 that's the point. Yeah. That's the point. So we're all different guys. We all now when the, when the dietologist or whatever say, Hey, you know what salad is good for you? Uh, is it is it really for for hundred percent of the population salad is great? R really, I, I don't think so, guys. I really mm -hmm. don't. No, because I I did measurement. Okay, it, it's 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 not obvious. Oh, hamburger is bad for you. Oh, you know what? If I work like a horse, like for the last five hours, and I need uh, calories and all that stuff, the hamburger will be okay for me. You know, and, and salad's not going to be okay for me because I need nutrients at this point. I need to recover. I need recovery. The recovery doesn't... Now, if you, if you work hard or if you uh, exercise in, in, in a gym room, what, you come in home and eat salad? You take protein. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not like, oh, you know what? Salad is just like, whoosh, wow, you're going to be... You're going to live forever. Yeah, no, it's it's not there. Yeah, so I think so, what I'm hearing the most, what I'm hearing the most out of both of you now is the the breakthrough that we could probably expect in 2022 is the proper selection of solutions to drive efficiency to cover the gaps that we're experiencing in today's world, right? With either the workforce shortage or uh, the workforce shortage or uh, shortage or the uh, just the overall demand increase. Like, so we're, we're kind of stuck with a double-edged sword where there's a shortage of workforce and there's an exponential increase in demand. It doesn't really make much sense. So now I think, you know, from what I'm hearing from you guys, the real breakthrough is tapping into technologies to find the efficiencies and the right, and to make the right decisions more regularly 
uh, to make sure that we protect and preserve the human being uh, while trying to achieve, you know, the, the, uh, the levels that are required to meet the demand. Would that be a fair assumption? Absolutely. Let's shortly optimization without damaging the, the object we're working on, like human being, let's say optimization like yes the the scientific way to optimize the the workforce yeah because yeah, because so far nothing has been done on, on the okay to, maybe i'm losing something but nothing has been done in that field uh there is like i, I was in china and uh, they have a they have a after after lunch nap like everybody sleeps at the factory. It doesn't matter what factory you have. You have like r ridiculously, uh, let's say my, my CM, CMT machines working, okay? They just work and you cannot stop it. But somehow they stop it. Somehow they stop it and they just sleep. Or maybe they leave one, one guy monitoring if so everything's go well. But everybody sleeps, but maybe, maybe, uh, this day I, I don't need to now can you just check out your smartphone okay see the number and say you know what i'm i'm actually don't need any sleep today so i will i will do better without or maybe i need more today who knows right? maybe i need more that's it exactly maybe you can talk to your co-worker and say hey you know what you're not gonna sleep today i can see you fine uh, i'll take your time <laughs> <laughs> you know, instead, <laughs> instead of we'll, whatever, we'll what trade, we'll trade, we'll trade on the sleep schedule. <laughs> yeah, what they do, like, <laughs> yeah, what they do, like, thirty minutes sleep. So I will sleep hour, okay, for both of us. <laughs> so I don't know, guys. So, but, but should be some indicator, should should be some visible, you know, and 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 scientific indicator. Because this, we leave, we don't feel anything inside unless it's too late, right? When we feel it's too late. <laughs> oh, when we feel it's too late, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know, no, we don't feel anything. But, but the point is that indicator is, exists. That's the point. And it's pretty simple to extract that HRV. It's, it's pretty simple. I don't know why it's, it's, sti it's still in research and development, but I just don't, you know what? I don't understand why it takes so so long for researchers and all that stuff. Actually, the same way as do we have a medicine? Do we have a medicine uh, against COVID? No, we don't have. There's no medicine. There is a vaccine, but there is no medicine. How long? I, I just uh, listened to some uh, whatever PhDs and all that stuff. How long will it take to 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 make, create that medicine? Like two three years? Maybe never. Maybe even never, because we still don't have medicine against the, the, the uh, what's his name? Uh, H HIV? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we still don't have. We, we, have, we have a bunch of like cocktail that, that suppressing the, that illness, but we don't have medicine. And it's already, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years exists, right? So, so maybe never. And, and, and that indicator will be easy to extract. It's, uh, it's pretty precise. It's it, depending on what, what sample rate you, you take out of it and you see the number. And it's, it's, it, it, is an, it is like scientifically proven indicator of your uh, sympathetic, parasympathetic uh, functionality of your system. That's, that's, that's all knows. It, it, it doesn't need the proof. It's it's already proof proven like hundred times. So uh, I don't know why it's not there yet. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe shortage of the chips. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Once they know that they can, they, they need to do more with a lot less, because we have, we have to do more with less people, and we have to do more with less consumables. Absolutely. Uh, it's we're just gonna have no. We're gonna have no choice. That they're yeah, either right. gonna get, inflation's gonna kick in, things are gonna get more expensive. Things get more expensive. You got a choice. You pay more, or you just don't do it, or you do less of it, or you you use less of it, or you borrow, or you find some alternative. Absolutely. Unless you find a breakthrough in technology that's gonna like basically Absolutely. eliminate the need for that. I, I don't can't. see any other way. So I think 
if we echo back and loop back to 2022, I think it'll yeah. Uh, yeah, 2022 is going to be complicated. Now, can you tell me, one of you, uh, or whatever, why we have a shortage on chips? Is any any earthquakes, any any hurricanes that ruin the factories that, that manufacture in those chips? Nothing. Where 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 is it all? Because I, don't know, I, haven't, I haven't looked. I haven't uh, <clears throat> looked into it at all. Yeah, because probably the, the, the number one uh, comes to mind that was a, a quarantine and factory has been closed. I don't know. One of the Maybe. interesting things that I'd heard, uh, Larry, I sat in on a supply chain uh, management uh, like automation conference, I don't know, a few months ago now. And they were talking about like yogurt manufacturers and like when the pandemic hit and they're like getting like point in time data on marketing and sales and what it wants. And right away they saw like a shift in like, people didn't want this. I don't know. I'm, I'll make this up. I don't even, but it was like, we don't want low fat yogurt. Now we want full fat yogurt and we sell more with purple label rather than the blue label. So it was like, stop the production line and then switch all the labeling, come up with the, like make more of the high fat versus low fat. And so that interruption in in supply chain, never mind just like the the downtime and the re figuring out processes. Like they're retooling a line to like manufacture the packaging, the labels, all of these, and it's, so it's not just impacting like the yogurt producer or the the dairy farmer. It like goes all the way back to like the person that like supplies the cardboard for that box because now it's got to be cut differently, and the printer has got to change because he needs a different type of ink and might need a different chip. <clears throat> And like all yeah. these like different things compound and it's like i had no idea how complex and tightly interdependent like connections live oh. in in and the supply chain it is uh, unreal it was an eye opener to sit in on that uh even the transportation right eric like now that the package is in a different shape you can fit more or less in the container in a shipping container so now you need two transports instead of one because of the you know the 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 you know the the, the shift in size, it, the the impacts of, of some of the decisions that are made are like when you start looking at the ripple effects, it's so interesting, and I think that the big big push on one adopting technology, two uh, people are becoming more and more data focused, and then three um, all the shift to decarbonize. Is like a is like a perfect storm of all of these things need chips. <laughs> all of these things need chips. So you can you can have zero factories closed, but the demand has increased exponentially, yeah. and you just can't keep up. You know, when you think about a big company like Ford that has now pushed back their releases of their lightning trucks because they're missing one chip in the dashboard, um, they're a big company, and you would think they would have enough power to make sure that the chips show up at their front door and they can't even do it, right? So, so I think it's just like a perfect storm between more technology being adopted, people being data-driven, so they're craving, they're craving the sensors, and then just overall new technology being developed that needs those sensors, it's almost like a perfect storm. Oh, yeah, I agree with you because, yeah, thinking of that in detail is actually interesting because the factory... The, the, the manufacturer and the chips, right? They, they, they're not unlimited. They, they have limitation. They have like two, three lines. So there are four, five, 10 lines, okay? No more. Now, if the order comes on that particular chip and, 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 uh, and the, 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 the buyer uh, ready to pay that amount of money, they, they re redo all the lines and just run that production because everything's based on, on profit on profit now to build another factory guys it's it's enormous it's like three four billion dollar factory the only one lithographic machine that makes the the the, the discs right the, the, the silicon discs 150 uh, million dollar the only one machine and the only one company that in, in holland in the netherlands that manufacturing those machines so uh, scalability is very limited yeah you, you cannot, okay, you know what? Yeah, let's build another five factories. No, it's not going to work like that. Now, that company that makes lithography machines for the silicones, uh, they, they, they booked for five years ahead. 
and nobody else does it on, on the planet Earth. So that's that's where we're running now. If Ford says, "Okay, Taiwan, okay, give me those chips, okay, I'll pay you. I paid you before fifty cents. Now I pay you fifty bucks for each one." Of course, they they redo all all the lines and run only only Ford production. Of course, that's the money. Yeah. So that's yeah, that's that's how it was. Now the, the lumber shortage. Okay, some people losing, some people actually uh, earning a lot. Who can, who could do the the, the properly manage to manage to, to still still produce the lumber, and the pricing went from four hundred and seventy dollars per whatever feet they, they I don't know how they measure to seventeen hundred. Of course, they make more money if you can manage and 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 do the production and increase the production and all that stuff. So. Somebody loses, somebody makes a lot. Actually, somebody gets rich uh, by that pandemic a lot. lot. And and I'm not saying it's it's wrong. It just it's just management. It's what's so. It's what it's yeah. what's so right. Yeah, it's it's management skills. You 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 know you energetic enough to to do the, the changes, proper changes. I mean, not the wrong decisions, proper decision. You you and your team, and you you just make money. Yeah, uh, it's not wrong to do this stuff, you know. Just organizing, yeah, exactly. optimizing stuff. Right on, Larry. Well, hey, you know, for 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 the sake of our, of the timelines that we've committed of your time and uh, and for the show, uh, I thank you for joining us today. We've had some pretty intense and great conversations, as I expected we would. Um, and just to, uh, for a quick recap for our audience. Uh, 2022, dig into those efficiencies and uh, leverage those opportunities to be better, bigger, faster, stronger with less, right? Um, and maybe we can give a little bit of a segue in there as well that uh, in 2022, you'll probably be hearing from uh, Sophie Komodo Tech and Technica with something coming up, I'm sure, right, Larry? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And probably in 2022, I, I will be able to come up with the real numbers that will show you the the, 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 the uh, that approach to to the workforce and all that stuff yes right on or to it right on so again thanks a lot everyone for uh, for joining us and uh you know like eric said at the beginning hit that like subscribe we've coming up with new content every month and hope you enjoy it uh this will be our last episode for 2021 which is an exciting uh, milestone for us uh in our first year of production and uh, you'll be hearing from us again in january uh, so we look forward to our next conversations. And uh, Larry, thanks again for joining in. It's always a great conversation with you. Thank you, guys. And it was it was a pleasure for me to talk to you about. And then and, 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 and happy holidays, guys. Right on. Thanks, Thank you. And Eric, thanks for joining me again. And thanks for a great 2021. We've had uh, eight fantastic episodes. And uh, what started out as an idea and a concept emerged into uh, a pretty mainstream thing. So we're looking forward to seeing what we produce in 2022. Right on. Thanks a lot, Gus. Been, it's been lots of fun from the anticipation of the first one and not knowing what we'd say to the way it's going now. It's been a blast. So let's keep it going. Right on. Thanks a lot, everyone. And we'll catch you on the next episode next year. Thanks for everybody watching.